Hello fellow makers. I'm here with a project I'm going to make for the Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous 2022 Halloween release. And today I'm going to be using the Gothic Tapestry CMS 454 amazing stamp set. I'm going to be stamping a background and then stamping this over it. I'm going to try and use the heat emboss resist technique that I really love to use, but I'm not using the clear embossing powder today. I am going to use the Hickory Smoke embossing glaze and the clear embossing ink. So let's see how this works. I'm not positive this is actually going to turn out, but I thought it would be really fun to give it a shot. So I kind of want this to have like a ghostly appearance somewhat with uh, the music kind of in the background or maybe some of the writing in the background. I might try a couple of different ways. And I would like that to stay under the embossing but disappear in the rest of the stamp. So that's why I'm going to stamp it in Distress Ink. I have no idea if this is, technique is going to turn out or not. I was just thinking about this and I thought it would be fun to try and see if I could trap it underneath and have the rest of it kind of, you know, muddy up and disappear. So I'm inviting you to come along with me and let's get crafting. Since this is going to be the main focal point and these are going to be in the background, I have two pieces of Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock that I've cut in five and a half uh, by eight and a half. So I just cut a, a piece in half. This is much bigger than I need because this piece, if I use the whole thing, will fit on a five by seven card. It's about hmm, four and... I guess that would be five eighths by six. So this would fit fine on a five by seven card front if that's what you wanted to use. If you wanted to use the whole thing, um, if you just wanted to use part of it, you could fit it on an A2 card with part of it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp background on here and then I'll stamp this in there and I will be able to just trim it however I want. So I'm going to go ahead and start with one of these and I'm going to use, this one is, um, if you want to see it, this one looks like this and it looks like just some handwriting with 30 corants or something like that, quart. It's kind of hard to see and it might be in a different language 1899 so I'm going to be stamping that and I'm gonna try pumice stone so and I actually need to prepare my stamp so it'll stamp a little bit better so let me do that I'm gonna grab my archival distress ink and I'm going to stamp it on here get it all inked up and then I have my inky binky and I'm just gonna wipe it off and that's all you have to do when you get a new stamp is just get it ready like that okay so now I have my pumice stone and it should take the ink much better. And I'm just going to go all the way down. If it's not perfect, it's okay because remember I want this to disappear in the background. and just stay under the parts where I emboss it. It'll be fun if this works out, right? It's always fun to just kind of try something new. And 
that's probably plenty, but I'm gonna keep going because you never know, I might wanna use a leftover bit on, um, you know, for typing a sentiment or something or stamping a sentiment to go over the front. All right. And I wipe this off and we're good to go for the next time. I could spray some water on it if I want, but I'm really not worried about it. Okay. Now I need this dry and I have my heat gun out here. So instead of my uh, heat tool, I have my embossing heat tool. Um, so I'm just gonna use that real quick to make sure that I get this nice and dry because I'm going to be embossing on it and I don't want the embossing to get on any of this that I want to disappear later on, right? Because I don't want it to be permanent. I want it to stay distressing. All right, so I'm back. I have my stamping tool out. I'm gonna go ahead and before I stamp this, let me close the lid. And I do want to prep it a little bit. Actually, I don't need to with embossing, so I'm not gonna do that because I don't want any of the dark archival to come off. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. I'm gonna kinda go in the center here. Go. And that leaves this, I don't know if you can see it, that leaves this down here that if I want to later on, if I want to stamp, you know, a bold sentiment or something that I would put on my card, I can do that. So that will be left over. And let me... have my clear embossing ink, Ranger Distress Embossing Ink, and I'm going to ink up this whole thing, and I'm just kind of looking to see if I can see that I've gotten it on every bit of that, and it looks like it, but just in case... And this is a stamping tool that my father made me out of a molding square that you get at like Home Depot or Lowe's. He drilled a hole and he put a vintage doorknob on it and some felt on the bottom. And it just helps me get even pressure all the way across. So, looks pretty good, but I'm gonna go one more time just to make sure that I got all the parts of it. set this aside. I'm going to bring in that paper. And I have the hickory smoke distress embossing powder or embossing glaze. Now remember the glazes are different than an embossing powder because they are not opaque. They are translucent. So, because they're translucent, I should be able to see through the image to what's underneath, All right? Uh, okay, I did not get it good in the center there, and it's hard to tell until you do it. So, that's too bad. 
because it's right in the center so I can't use you know part of it so if you, you can see I'm missing this whole center section here for some reason all right we're gonna try that again And if you look before, I'm gonna go ahead and just see if this works on this one, since we're just trying it out. But you can see that for whatever reason, this was still wet here in the center. So I have some embossing powder on the words and I don't want it on the words. So I'm going to just brush it off. And I'm going to brush it off in here a little bit where I don't want it on those letters. Okay. I know Tim says not to flip, but I'm doing that anyway. Okay, and then all you have to do is put this back just like you do regular embossing powder. Glaze goes back in. Let's just try a little bit of spraying some things on it and see how it looks. So if I spray a little antique linen and what if I spray a little bit of crushed olive and I'm even going to do a little frayed burlap just because a couple of a couple little splotches. And another bit of antique linen over there. I really want and let's do a little water on here too. See how that works. Cool, I like it. I am going to set this aside to dry and I'm going to try the, the second one. Because remember, I'm going to iron this off and so I want to see what's left underneath. All right, this one I am going to try the music notes. And I think I'm going to stick with pumice stone. It is one of my favorites. So. And I did spray a little water on this one. I'm just wiping it off and it's going back onto my little stamp index card. All right. I am going to dry this off camera. And All right, so I have this completely dry. I have put some of the powder anti-static powder all over it and this time I decided to try my embossing dabber and so I did dab all over it but I'm going to do it twice just to make sure I get plenty of ink on there and I won't make you watch me re-ink it.
All right, now for the second round. Just to make sure, let's see if this one turns out a little bit better. Our, our original one is still drying. Using the same color of Distress Embossing Powder, or I mean Distress Embossing Glaze. Remember this is translucent, so we should be able to see some of those musical notes behind our image. a much better image. Okay. Okay, so we have a little bit still kind of on the outside where we have a little bit. So I will go ahead and take a brush and just brush a few of those little points off. But other than that, you can see that it's stuck on the embossing glaze but it didn't stick on the rest of it. So hopefully when I heat emboss the glaze, that music will stay trapped underneath and the rest of it will disappear. So let's see if it works. All right, so here we go. We It's embossed. You can see it's the glaze is shiny and you really can't see too much underneath. But since I'm gonna iron this off, we'll see how that goes. Now, you lose a lot of the definition uh, this way that you would have on the stamp. The stamp's very detailed. There's a lot of definition because it's a beautiful uh, rubber stamp. And so you can see that there's a lot of definition lost. Uh, I'm, and I'm not really too worried about that with this technique. Uh, I just wanna see if it'll work and, you know, just experiment with it. So I again have some antique linen stain that I'm going to put in a couple of places where I want to try doing some coloring uh, with with distress inks maybe in a minute, a few minutes when it dries a little bit. And I'm also coming with some weathered wood I don't know why that is not sprayed, but I guess I have weathered wood on one side. And I will have a little bit of that crushed olive coming in also. And I flipped a few bits of frayed burlap. Now, I like it nice and wet because, remember, I want to reactivate that Distress ink that's in the background and try and get it to kind of disappear. And also, I want it to dry around the few areas that are open. So, let's let this dry and I'll come back in a little while and we'll iron it off. Let's talk about where we're at right now. So I did, I made two extras uh, since my first two that I tried out were not the greatest. Um, so I did two more with just the embossing ink pad and you can see this one uh, was a little rough here down the center, but this one's pretty much, uh, I got stamped perfectly. So there's a little more definition than there were was with the one that I used the uh, embossing uh, the dabber. So I lost a lot of definition on that one. So this uh, had much more definition with my embossing ink pad. So anyway, I made two extras, uh, but I went ahead and colored these just because I wanted to, you know, uh, practice around. What I decided to do after I sprayed these 
with Distress Inks, and you saw me kind of get started on a couple of those, and I just added some different uh, Distress Ink colors to, to these, and I let them dry a little bit, and then I decided I kind of wanted to add a little shimmer to them, and so I went in and started adding some of the new mica stains for this year, so I added on quite a few of them for the yellows. I added the Harvest Moon, this one, I added some of the Fortune Teller, uh, where there is orange. I added a little bit of the Burning Ember. And for some of the green areas, I added some Wicked Elixir. And then uh, for these two, I just sprayed over them. So this one you might be able to see here and there. I just did a spray over it with Decayed. So I just did kind of a spritz over it and then I colored in the areas with, uh, and I actually added like shabby shutters and then um, sprayed some of the Wicked Elixir in with it. So it wasn't just straight mica. And then I spritzed over most of it when I would just spray it on, spritz over it with some water and then dab it off and let it dry. This one, I when I spritzed it, then I just went ahead and dabbed it off a little. I, you don't want it to be too strong. But hopefully you can see a little bit of that shimmer, that mica shimmer. And this one uh, I used, I spritzed some of the Harvest Moon in a couple of areas and a little bit of the Wicked Elixir in a few areas. And then I spritzed the whole thing with water and dried it off. Then I went in with uh, my water brush and I colored in the areas that I wanted. So now, I'm, you can kind of see that it's just, we just have a little bit of ghost writing in the background on some of these, a little bit of ghost music. And then this one's obviously absolutely a complete disaster, but uh, I was just, you know, on these, I put way more of the uh, mica stain and then with water and let it dry. So, but I just still wanted to try and uh, see how much would show through if I ironed this off. So that's where we're going now. I have my iron here to the side, it's warmed up. I have my, uh, this is just that thin uh, paper uh, that you run through an inkjet and I'm going to go ahead and iron. So and I'll start with this one, the worst one. So what you want to do is you want to take your scrap piece of paper and you want to lay it over it. And this is just one of my inky binkies. It's clean. I know it looks absolutely horrific, uh, but I just recycle them. I run them through the washer on hot and uh, it's, you know, I need to get some new ones, but these still work fine. So uh, the reason I'm doing this is I want to pad my glass mat so that I am not ironing directly on the glass mat. And this is just a hot iron. So you are reheating the glaze, just like with the iron off resist where you are reheating the embossing powder and it is going to soak into this scrap piece on top. Now, sometimes when I've done this in the past with patterned backgrounds and things, I actually could use the iron off with the distress glaze and often the distress glaze will leave a little bit of color behind. So let's see what we end up with. All right, so <clears throat> over here is where you have a lot of the color and then over here, hmm. Okay, so I have a little bit of glaze still left there. That's interesting. You can, can you see the image a little bit still? And remember, this was the worst one, so, but it's just kind of, it's almost got a debossed feeling to it. Super cool. So I'm not gonna throw this away, even though it wasn't great, because it still has some texture, it still has some mica, um, and so I could cut things out of this for the Halloween season and that would, you know, be maybe really cool. I have a little bit of text in there and, you know, just that texture with the, 
where I ironed off the em embossing glaze. So I will save this. Now this, if it was a good piece of paper, I could possibly, I'm gonna move this and I'll try it for you. This, remember, this is cheap paper, so don't expect anything great, but um, you can sometimes, if, if I used good paper, you can get an extra background out of it. So maybe I will cut some good paper for the other ones and we'll see what I get. So you get like an additional print from it. Now this needs to dry, um, but it almost looks velvety on this cheap paper. So this has inspired me to, I'm going to cut an, a couple more pieces of, uh, what did I use? Distress Mixed Media. And let's see if we can get some uh, additional prints out of the next few. All right, let's go th that direction. All right, so this was the second one that wasn't great. But let's see if we get an iron off that we can use. And again, we can always use it as our um, die for die cutting or something like that. Again, this wasn't one of the best, so. All right, so that's kind of cool. So it's kind of ghostly. And then you've got the flower kind of standing out. And look at that music from behind. That's really cool. All right, so what this tells me is that before I do anything, I think I want to make the backgrounds on the others a little darker, right? Because unless you want it kind of very ghostly, see how it stands out much more where you have a darker background? So I kind of think I might want to do that. All right, so here's this. Let's see what we've got. Oh. So there is the iron off which is really cool. So that's why I love this technique. You oftentimes will get two completely different looks from this. And I still really love kind of the ghostly look here, but I think I'm gonna go ahead and spray a little more on these. All right, this one is a little darker, so let's try it. Okay, that's cool. I love it. I really love it. And then here is our iron off. And I've already shown you how uh, it does a cool resist. So I love that. Let's see if you can see. You can barely see the music underneath it. Just barely. And you can barely see the music down here. Let's try the other one. Okay, so this one, I didn't get dark enough in where the teeth are. So I really should have gotten it darker in here uh, to have 
more of a resist, but you can, this one has really, really good ghost writing in the background. That's really cool. Um, so this taught me a lot. Uh, and then here is the iron off, um, which because I had a better stamped image, I have a better iron off stamped image <clears throat> for this one. So really like this one. Um, this one has elements I like, especially the writing in the background. So that gives me a place to start. Uh, I think I will probably off camera do a couple more with the same technique, uh, but color it with darker colors so that I have more of this ghost-like x-ray image showing through because I think that's really, really cool. All right, so in, in the next segment, you will probably see uh, others since these were my practice round. And I always, I like I, I like to be open with you guys so that you can see my mistakes and then you don't necessarily have to make the same mistakes that I make. And hopefully your creating session will go a little bit smoother than mine does. Um, but that's, for me, part of the fun is figuring out what works and obviously what <laughs> doesn't work, um, right? So anyway, and again, don't throw these away. You can always use them for die cutting, which is definitely what I'll be doing with this one as well. All right, I'll be back with a couple of other options. I decided to switch it up a little bit for this round. I stamped the lettering text in Freed Burlap, and then I used the walnut stain for the embossing glaze. And then for this one, I stuck with the pumice stone and the hickory smoke embossing glaze. So now I am going to use some darker distress stains on these and I'll show you them before I do the uh, iron off again. give this one a try. This is the hickory smoke with the pumice stone underneath and I sprayed it with some villainous potion, uh, rusty hinge, forest moss, and then a little bit of fortune teller and was it burning ember? Yes, burning ember mica stains. So now I've got it all over me. <clears throat> okay. Let's see how these turn out. All right, here we go. Oh, look at that. Nice. So you can see the music behind it. You can see a little bit of that mica stain showing through. You've got a lot of the detail still left behind with the darker in the background. And so it kind of has that, you know, x-ray type feel to it. And then you've got sparkly down here for, you know, anything else. If you want to do die cut some leaves or flowers or anything like that. 
I love it. And then here is our uh, additional resist. And sometimes you can see if, if uh, I don't get all of the ink wiped off of the surface, that it will soak in when you iron it off. Uh, so you can kind of see a little bit of that. It doesn't bother me. Um, it just kind of blends in and adds to the distressed look. So that has, that doesn't bother me at all. I really love it. Okay. And you can see how, um, see how it's not as light as if I, and I didn't ink the paper. It was this color. Remember when I started, it was this color. But um, that's what happens when you do the iron off resist with the glazes instead of the just the clear uh, embossing is that it leaves behind a little bit of the color of the glaze. And I really, I just love it. Okay, let's try the other one. I think it's dry. Looks pretty dry. Okay. This one was stamped with frayed burlap and then this is the walnut stain embossing glaze all right here we go wow that's really interesting So there, it feels like there's some of the embossing glaze kind of left in this area a little bit, but look at the color variations just in that section right there. And this, uh, you can still see the frayed burlap writing underneath. So cool. And I think I forgot to tell you, I used prize ribbon, uh, villainous potion, pine needles, and crackling campfire on this one so there you go two completely different looks oh and you can kind of see it here uh i used a little bit of wicked elixir and some more of the purple uh fortune teller and I think a little bit of the burning ember as well on this one. It's not as sparkly though, or shimmery. There's just a little bit of the green is all I'm really seeing through a tiny bit of the burning ember here. Um, I'm not really seeing any of the purple though, shining through, uh, just more of the, I'm getting much more of the green uh, kind of coming through there really cool so there are my two final things that I am gonna try and make a card with now and so we'll see how that goes and then I will probably use these for some sort of additional card just to show how it works and you can see the leftovers of some of the spray on this one a lot more of the leftovers and again that doesn't bother me ever uh when that happens i think it's kind of cool all right so let's get some cards made this is what i ended up with makers the main card that is the iron off resist was stamped with the gothic tapestry cms 454 and i began by stamping the script text all over a half a piece of an eight and a half by 11 Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock. I stamped it in frayed burlap, Distress Ink, because I wanted the ink on the outside of the stamp to eventually just wick away. And I wanted the text to just remain under where the main stamp was going to go. Then remember, I stamped this in clear embossing ink and then I embossed it with the Distress Embossing Glaze in Walnut Stain. I heat embossed that. And then I went ahead and used Distress Stain in Cracked uh, Crackling Campfire, 
this is Villainous Potion, Blueprint Sketch, Pine Needles. I added a little bit of the new, uh, a few of the new mica stains in, let's see if I remember. Um, the Fortune Teller is the purple and the uh, Wicked Elixir, and then a little bit of the burnt, uh, burning ember for the orange. Add it just the tiniest touch, and you might be able to see it, but probably only in person. Uh, some of the green shows up here, uh, but you really, unless you're in person, can only see that shimmer on the flower, on the sentiment, and kind of in the background, you can see a little bit of shimmer, but mostly what shows up are the, the big drops of the green. All right, so then once that dried naturally, I ironed it off, and I ironed it off with a second piece of Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock. And when I ironed it off, Remember, the, the Distress Embossing Glaze remelted and it soaked into the second piece of Distress Mixed Media Heavy Stock, leaving a darker image because it was walnut stain, but it still resists. Then, because it remelted and it soaked into this piece, that left just a tiny, tiny bit of walnut stain color but mainly a resist that allowed that uh, distress ink script stamping to show through and I just really love the effect of that and as you probably saw it took several attempts to get it right and that's okay sometimes when you're learning hopefully my mistakes helped you learn so that you don't make the same ones all right, then, because I did this several times, I had extras left over that I wasn't necessarily going to use. And so I went through and I cut out this flower. I cut out this leaf. I cut out this bit of a leaf and this bit of a leaf. And you can kind of see it a little bit better on the stamp. So I cut out this part of the leaf and I didn't cut out this part that's kind of folding over. So I just kind of made my own little leaf part there. I cut this out and I cut this leaf out as well as cutting out this flower. And then I layered them. I inked them and layered them in the corner. The sentiment, I did that on both of them. The sentiment, for both of them. And this one says Lost in the Inky Darkness, which I thought went well with this. And this one is Treacherously Supplied by the Imagination. Those are from Tiny Text Halloween CMS 409. And you have so many great, you know, sayings and bits of quotes and things like that on here uh, that this is something that if you're going to make any Halloween makes, um, not even just cards, but Halloween makes, these are great to have so that you can stamp something that you might just kind of put into a make or on a card. All right. Now, as you can see, because this one was darker, the inking I did is uh, very washed out. So I sprayed Distress inks on it and then I, add, I, I sprayed water over it and then I took a paper towel and I went over it and I blotted it off so that most of the saturation uh, would be soaked into the towel, but I would still get some color. And then this is what I find really interesting about the, the, the part that was ironed off, the second generation or the second card, is that when you dry it. So now you can dry that. You don't have to wait for this one to dry naturally. This one, because it is embossing resist, you don't want to reheat the embossing powder while you have the wet ink on it. Okay. You, so you need to let this dry naturally. 
but this one you can actually dry because the resist is already there. So I actually use my heat tool and I went over it. And as you go over it, it kind of re, I don't know, reignites the, the embossing qualities or something. And it brings it all to the surface so that you can see so many more details and see it sitting on the surface there. And it allows the ink to kind of soak in and dry, but it pulls that embossing resist, that second generation resist up to the surface. And I think it's really cool. Now you should probably also be able to see that there is a little bit of sparkle on this left and even some different ink drops. And that is from this. Uh, some of it maybe wasn't completely dry or it was sitting on the embossing and I hadn't wiped it off. And because it resists and it doesn't really dry when it's sitting on the actual embossing um, glaze, then it will soak into the paper when you reheat it. Uh, and, but I like it. I think it adds to the distressed quality and I think it's really kind of pretty cool. So completely different looks. Two cards from basically one stamping. And um, I just think that, you know, this embossing resist is one of my favorite techniques. I said it over and over again because I use it so much, but it's really a fun technique to use with the embossing, distress embossing glazes. So I encourage you to get your glazes out and just give it a try and uh, you'll have so much fun. I hope that you enjoyed this. I really had a lot of fun trying to figure out how to get the stamping to stay under the you know, my stamped image, uh, and not on the background. And so, um, anyway, I really enjoyed this little experiment. So thanks for coming along with me. I know this was a long video and I appreciate, uh, your support and sticking with me all the way to the end. If you have any questions, as always, please contact me through my blog at playswellwithpaper.blogspot.com. There's a comment, uh, section in the right where you can, uh, or a contact section in the right where you can contact me. I'll be glad to answer your questions or clarify anything if you need it. Thanks again so much, and I hope that you have a very crafty day, my friends.